Good morning. Today is uh, Tuesday, August 10, 2021. And this is the continuation of Math K3, Chapter 13, 4 a series. And today I'm going to just do this uh, Laplace's equation, which has a lot of uses in physics and, you know, physics and engineering. <clears throat> So basically, the Laplace of the equation in Cartesian coordinates is uxx plus uyy equal to z. This is in two dimensions. And if you have a three dimension, then it's going to be uxx plus uyy plus uzz equal to zero. Uh, for example, you know, you can consider a two dimensional heat transfer conduction equation. And that you can write as, in Cartesian coordinates, you can write as alpha squared multiplied by uxx plus uyy equals to ut. But if you're interested in steady state, then ut is the time dependent part that goes to zero. And you simply have uxx plus uyy equal to zero, which is your Laplace equation. So that's one of the applications, and there are you know, many applications in, for this um, Laplace equation. So the problem of finding solution to the Laplace equation that takes on given boundary conditions, those problems they are called duration problem, where you have you have to solve this Laplace equation with uh, some specified boundary conditions. You know that is you is given on the x and y boundaries, you know, that would be your call the Dirichlet problem. And if the values of the derivatives of this variable u are given at the boundary, then we call this problem as Neumann problem. Just that's how you call it. Now, <clears throat> now the problem would be more complex and it would be a combination of the two, you know. Somewhere you will be given the boundary condition in terms of u, and other places you'll be, and in the same problem you're going to be given, at other boundaries you're going to be given the derivative of u. Uh, so it would be a combination of two, and you know. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to just consider the Dirichlet problem for a rectangle. So we have a rectangle and the x direction is what goes from 0 to A and the y direction is goes from 0 to B. And this is our, so that's a two-dimensional geometry. And in two dimensions, in Cartesian coordinates, you're going to have this um, Laplace of the equation as uxx plus uyy equal to 0. So we are trying to solve this differential equation. And the given boundary conditions in the rectangle are specified by ux at y equal to 0 is 0, which is this one, this guy. Here it is 0, and at ux at y equal to b equal to 0, which is this, this boundary. So this variable u that we are interested in, is, it is 0 at this boundary and it is 0 in this boundary. And as I said before, x goes from 0 to a. x goes from 0 to a, it's just a rectangle. So this was about these two boundaries where we have specified the Dirichlet boundary condition. We have specified the boundary condition over here. <clears throat> and then on this boundary over here, where x equal to 0, so ux equal to 0, y, again it is 0. And at x equal to a, it is some given function of y. So we need some non-homogeneous boundary condition, and that's where it is provided to you. And u at this boundary right here. U a y is a function of y. And y, as I said before, goes from 0 to b. 0 to b. So this is the problem that we need to solve. All right. So, as you can see, that there is a second derivative with respect to x and second derivative with respect to y. 
So we need two boundary conditions for this one and two boundary conditions for this one. A total of four boundary conditions, and that's what we have. We have one, two, three, and four. So the problem is well specified. Now we're going to solve this problem again as we have been solving by separation variables. So u x y is your x, which is a function of x, and this capital Y, which is a function of y only. So u is given by capital X for the by capital Y, and that's your equation number five. And the boundary conditions are your equation number four. And this differential equation, the process of the equation is number one. So we have done this thing before. If I substitute this into this differential equation and just divide it by x, y, I'm going to get an equation. This equation converts into x capital X double prime divided by capital X equals to minus y double prime divided by y. And this must be equal to the same constant here because this depends on x only, this depends on y only. We have done this thing before, and you're going to get an equation like this here. So if I take these two, I'm going to get an equation like, <clears throat> and take this quantity over there, x over prime minus lambda x prime equal to zero, that's my equation number six. And if I take this guy, consider this guy, then I'm going to get y double prime plus lambda y equal to zero. So from this I got these two equations, six and seven. And this number equation six is going to satisfy the boundary condition over here. This at x equal to zero. And you can put this thing in right, you can see that it actually, we have done this before. So this boundary condition over here, this boundary condition over here is going to be x of 0 equal to 0. That's your boundary condition with 8. And similarly, y equal to 0. y equal to 0 is again 0. And yb, this will, this will give you the yb, that is also equal to 0. So we have three homogeneous boundary conditions for this one. So first of all, <clears throat> yeah. So we have we have this specified one homogeneous condition over here, and these two homogeneous conditions are for this one here. So first of all, we're going to define the solution. We're going to solve equation number seven. And this equation we have already seen before. You know, it's familiar. That's why we're going to solve it first. With boundary condition number nine, this boundary condition over here. Okay, these two homogeneous boundary condition. They apply to this one. And just like we did before in the heat conduction and the wave equation, you're going to find the lambda equal to n pi by b whole square. Because now it's going to zero at and y equals to variable small y equal to b. So that's what you're going to get for lambda. That's why equation number 10. And to satisfy this condition, the y and small y equal to zero and small y equal to b, you're going to have a sine function. And you can see that right here. If I put my y equal to zero, I get my y equal to zero. And if I put y equal to b, again, it's going to be zero. But the cosine is not going to satisfy, and therefore, we don't consider that, as we have seen before. So <clears throat> next, substitute from 10, which is this, the value of lambda, into 6, which is this one. And so if I solve this equation with boundary, boundary condition 8, so we already know, <clears throat> we already know, we already know the solution of this y, now we're going to go to this x. And we have again done this thing before. For x, you know, there's a minus sign over here. So the solution is going to be some constant cosh, which is the hyperbolic, hyperbolic cosine function, n pi x by b plus b 
shine or hyperbolic sine function of n pi x by b. <clears throat> you know, you can put it e to the power x, e to the power this thing x, and e to the power minus this, and you know, that equal to this, this, this fellow here. <clears throat> and you can satisfy yourself. You can put this thing here, and you see that, you know, you, you can get this answer here. This is because if I differentiate cosine, it becomes sine. It doesn't change the sine. And again, if I differentiate it, I'm going to get cosine back. And this I differentiate, I get cosine. So they're going to just cancel out. <clears throat> so x is the solution of this differential equation. This is the solution of this differential equation. Now I'm going to apply, to this x, I'm going to apply this boundary condition over here, number a, that x equal to 0 should be 0. So obviously for that, you know, to satisfy that condition, your this hyperbolic cosine should be equal to 0. So we get our function xx, it's going to look like proportional to hyperbolic sine n pi x by b. This part is going to be 0. So basically, I know how my x looks like, capital X looks like. And I also know my, how my capital Y looks like. And the, so the total, so the fundamental solution, u and, u, u and x, y, I can just multiply these two, you know. Separation variables that we have done, this guy. X, I know, I know Y, so I know this guy. That, that's what I did exactly. So that is my X. So hyperbolic sine N pi X by B. And this is my Y. Y is your sine N pi Y by B. So this is my fundamental solution here. <clears throat> For the various values of N, these are the solutions in as they've been before. Now these fundamental solutions, they satisfy the differential equation number one, and that because you know we just we showed it. And they, for each end, they're also going to satisfy the homogeneous um, boundary conditions, because that's what we did just now. <coughs> so now I can write the general solution, you know, that it's going to be a linear combination of all these, you know. N equal to one. To infinity, cn, un, x, y, where cn is a constant over here. So cn, and then I'm going to just write this thing over here. So that's my general solution, though. Because now I want to apply, I want to find this constant by applying the non homogeneous boundary condition. <clears throat> All right. So now I apply my non homogeneous boundary condition. And what was that? That was this condition. That u at x equals to a is given by some function of y. So I'm going to put x equal to a over here. And this x equal to a here. So it's going to be u a y equals to summation sign n equals 1 to infinity cn hyperbolic sign n pi a divided by b because I put x equal to a here and this remains the same sine n pi y by b and that must be equal to f y as given by this boundary condition. Let me just check the camera for a second. All right. <coughs> and if I look at this, what is it? I see some constant over here, Cn, hyperbolic sine n pi a by b. That is my constant. And there is a sine over here. So this is basically a Fourier. Sine series is its expansion of this Fy. And therefore I know how the, to calculate these coefficients, this coefficient for a sine series. Uh, so the coefficient for the Fourier sine series of period 2b of f I can write it as cn, that's my coefficient right here. 
So the coefficient of the CN hyperbolic sine n by a by b must be equal to 2 by a integral 0 to b. Then I have my function fy and sine n pi y by b dy. So this is how, now to calculate my CN, I know this guy, so CN will be equal to this thing, given this value, divided by this hyperbolic sine n pi a divided by b. I can calculate my CN, and that CN I can put it over here, so I get the Fourier series expansion of this degree shape problem. <coughs> Now there's an example over here. A is equal to three. So x, this, this guy is three, and then y and the b is two. So, and the function that is given to you, this function that is given to you, This guy over here. And x equals to a, fy, this fy, that function that is given to you is this, you know. Y from, it is a function of y, right? So y equals 0 to 1, it is y just a straight line up. Now remember, it's going to be a surface now. <clears throat> So that's a straight line, and then you know it comes out to from one to two, it comes down to zero. And so that's what it is. And if you solve this guy, now this this is going to be a surface, you know, three-dimensional surface. You will be a three-dimensional surface if this uh, how to draw it over here, but it looks something like this, you know. All right. So if I substitute this f over here, I can calculate by cn, and cn turns out to be a sine n pi by two, n squared pi squared hyperbolic sine three n pi by two. And in three dimension, that's how it's going to look like. It's going to be a surface, you know. Use the function of x and y. For each point in x and y, there will be a, in the z-axis, there will be another point, so it will be a surface that looks something like this. It's hard to draw over here. Now let's say you know that you have, that we have done this problem in Cartesian coordinates. Now I'm going to do this problem in polar coordinates. So a Dirichlet problem for a circle of radius of Ra. So that's my circle over here. And the boundary condition, the duration boundary condition that is given to you, that at its radius, it is some function of theta. You know, it varies with theta only. And r equals to a. So that's my boundary condition. Theta going from, goes from 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> now remember that, that this u r theta must be a single value function. So if I go, if I go around the circle and I come back, there should not be any discontinuity. That number, that should, they should overlap, right? They should, this should fall right on back this. So if I go by 2 pi, both the numbers must be equal. So what I'm saying is R, Theta plus 2 pi has to be u r theta to be single value. If I come back, I should, if it is the temperature, it should be the same temperature I travel 2 pi, you know, and things like that. So this simply means that this u is a periodic function with respect to 2 pi. That you must remember. Only a periodic function is going to satisfy this kind of a property. So, and then second thing is that u r theta must be bounded 
everywhere inside the circle. It, it cannot be an infinite number or something like that. So that would be sort of our second boundary condition. So in polar coordinates, this equation was in Cartesian coordinates. And in polar coordinates, you write it like um, U R R, where R R represents the differentiation with respect to this R, plus one by R U R, first derivative, plus one by R square U theta theta, that is differentiation, second order differentiation with respect to theta equal to zero. This is the Laplace's equation in the polar coordinates, and exactly we can do the same thing now. The, this u is a function of r and theta, two variables. So again, separation of variables, u r theta is going to be capital R r, capital theta theta. That's why equation number 20. And if I put this guy over here, it's easy to show that this turns out to be uh, r, r double prime. Our double prime is uh, total derivative now because it's r is only a function of r. So R double prime theta plus one over R, R prime multiplied by theta plus one over R square R theta double prime you know, equal to zero. And if I divide both the sides by R theta and multiply by this R square, I'm going to get R square R double prime divided by R plus small r, r prime divided by r, and it's, I can put the theta on the other side, and that's going to be minus theta double prime divided by theta, and it has to be equal to a constant because this depends on r, this depends on theta only. That's why equation number 21. So obviously, again, you know, you can see that we got two equations from this. My r equation, if you just simplify a little bit, multiply this thing by r, capital R, so it's going to give you r squared, r double prime plus r, r prime minus lambda r equal to zero. And this equation is going to give me theta double prime plus lambda theta equal to zero, that's a 23. Just a second. So I have these two equations, one for capital R, the other one for theta. So I'm saying that, okay, let's lambda equals to be some quantity mu squared, where mu is a positive number. Then this 22 and 23, these two equations, they become, if I substitute this, obviously it becomes R squared, R double prime plus R, R prime minus mu squared, plus r, that's my 24, and there's going to be theta double prime plus mu square theta equal to zero. Now this we can identify as an Euler equation. It's like x double prime, x prime, x, and we didn't do that, but you know, it's an Euler equation. And it's pretty straightforward, you know, it's solution, the solution to an Euler equation is your k1 sub constant r to the power mu plus k2 r to the power minus mu. And you can just check it yourself. You know, you can put r mu and r to the power minus mu for these r's and you can see that it satisfies that done it over here. If I take r mu, so this would be r squared. If you differentiate it twice, you're going to get mu, mu minus 1, r to the power mu minus 2. And there's your r over here, and you differentiate it once, you're going to get mu, r to the power mu minus 1. And this is your minus mu squared, r to the power mu. And this r squared combines with the mu minus 2, so it's going to give you mu, mu minus 1, r mu, plus, similarly, this r combines with this, so you're going to have mu, r to the power mu, and this is your minus mu squared r to the power mu. And we want to see if this is zero or not. 
So let's say this is equal to zero. So R mu is all this is going to cancel out, and you're going to get your mu square minus mu plus mu minus mu square, and they all just cancel out, so it is zero. So it does satisfy it. Similarly, it is going to satisfy two here. So we are sure that this is the solution of this equation, R equation. Now, equation number 25, this we have done many times before, you know, so it's going to be C1 sine mu theta plus C2 cosine mu theta. Now, in order that theta, capital theta, be periodic with a period of 2 pi, as we said over here, mu must be a positive integer n. Because this has to be periodic, you know, it's going to be like 2 pi, 4 pi. For that, it's got to be an integer. So our equation is going to look like uh, this. If mu is an integer, n, positive integer n, then this equation becomes RR equals to K1 R to the power N K2 R to the power minus N. Now as we said over here that this must be bounded within this circle, that is it cannot go to infinity. But here if I have R tends to zero, if R tends to zero, then this term goes to infinity. So K2 must be equal to zero. <coughs> R is going to tend to infinity is R tends to zero, so K2 must be zero. So my R solution should look like R to the power N, right? So we know how my theta looks like, where mu is your N, and I know that this guy is Rn, so Un equals to R multiplied by theta, and it's going to be your Rn to cosine theta, cosine n theta over here, and similarly it's going to be Rn and the sine n theta. So basically the general solution is going to be <coughs> this plus this <coughs> from n equal to 1 to infinity. Now I'm going to choose n equal to 0, I'm going to add this term like we did before also, I'm going to get to add a term c naught by 2. But this doesn't affect the solution because it's a constant. And the difference of the constant, you know, is always zero. So you can always add a constant over here. And there are no homogeneous boundary conditions over here. So that's not going to affect, I don't think it's going to affect the boundary conditions, you know. So I can write this thing. So basically this is a Fourier series, you know. Now to find this Cn and Dn, <clears throat> we're going to apply this non homogeneous boundary condition where it say u a theta, u a theta equals f theta. So u a theta equals to c naught by 2, that doesn't affect, is not affected, n equals 1 to infinity. 